Welcome to this recording where I want to show you how you can make a reduced major axis regression, also known as a standard major axis regression, in R by importing a dataset from Excel first. So this is my dummy dataset. I have named two variables, A and B, and selected a combo of numbers down here. And as you can see, my Excel is in Danish, so my numbers, the decimals, are separated by commas instead of dots. The first thing you want to do is to save the Excel dataset as a comma-separated file or a CSV file. And you do that by going to Files, Save As, and this thing shows up on, on a Mac, so it's going to look slightly different on a Windows, but you get this drop-down menu where you can choose all of the file formats and you want to go down to this one, .csv, or comma-separated values. So we're gonna, And I've decided to save my example file on my desktop, and it's going to be important later. So remember to save the files on your desktops. Just press, press save. And because I've already made this file, it's asking me if I want to replace it, and it's just yes, it will replace it. And now it's saved. So just to check, I'm going to open the text version of the file. As you can see here. So this is how it saves it. It has A and B columns, all of my, my numbers from the Excel file. And they're separated by semicolons. If you have an English Excel version, all of the semicolons are going to be in normal commas and all of the commas are going to be dots. It's also going to be important later. So, in order to make it a bit easier for you guys, I have pre-made a small script for you in R Studio. So, in the, when you're working in R, you usually download the R program and download R Studio. So, R Studio is sort of like the interface for R. So it makes it a bit more convenient to work in. So when you've downloaded both R and R Studio, you open R Studio, not R, in your application folder. The first thing you want to do is to tell the program where it should look for the file I just saved. And as I mentioned, I put it on my desktop. So this thing here stands for set working directory to the desktop. I'm going to run it by marking it and pressing this little button, run. You can see. It showed up down here in the console. So the console window shows us everything we have done. And the editor here shows everything that we want to do, or the recipe. Let's just open it up. Next thing we want to do is install the linear model to regression package. And I've put a small code here. So if it's not installed on your computer already, this line will install it, obviously. You only have to run this line once, because you don't need to install it every single time. So let's just mark that, run, and I get this warning because I already have it installed. So just press cancel. You should be able to see over here in the right lower right panel, it has a list of all the packages you have available. And if I just scroll up to L, here we have it, linear model 2. So it's installed. Then I need to open the package content, and I do that by the library command. So let's mark it up, press run, and you see down here in the console, now the package is open. Then we want to get our data into our file. So I've made this small variable here. I'm going to call data, and I need to read in the CSV file we just created before. So the um, first thing I'm going to do is changing the file name to the name of my file. And if you pay attention, I called the file before example. So let's just change that. This thing is because my data set has headers. I put the headers are true. And again, the separator and the decimator are a Danish Excel thing. So the separator between each entry was a semicolon. 
and the decimator was the comma because it's a Danish notation. So I have to put these two. If you're working on an English computer, you should probably change the separator to comma and the decimator to a dot. Right, so let's just mark this and press run. And pay attention in global environment. Now we have our data set available. Let's just check that it looks nice. There we have it, my A and B variables and all of the numbers. So the next thing we want to do is actually getting the linear model coefficients. And the function we're going to use is just called L model 2 for linear model 2. And you write it so it's the dependent variable and the independent variable, and then the name for the data set. Um, so in this case, I named my variables A and B. And B is going to be the dependent variable. So I'm just going to put B. A is going to be the independent variable. And I called my data set data, so that I can just leave as it is. And go press run. And a lot of stuff happens down here in the console window. And this is essentially what you want to look at. So we have the R squared values, the R value and the R squared value. Um, and then it provides us with this thing called regression results. And it gives us both the intercept and the slopes for the ordinary least squares method, the major axis method, and the standard major axis or reduced major axis method. And this is, last one is the one that we want. So I'm just going to grab the coefficients from this one. So I have the right intercept put it in here to my regression line function. I just make it a plus because it's a relative number. And I'm going to copy the slope, put that in as well. This function is just f of x, a function, and then just the normal way to write up functions, as you know, from math classes. And I run this line, marking it, running it. Keep an eye on global environments, you're now going to have this regression function available as well. So, if we just want to make a quick plot to see how our regression line actually fits with our data, I've made a small plot code for you guys down here. But again, we need to change the variable names. So, my x variable was a, I'm just changing that to a here and a again, and the axis labels. Just gonna put A in here. Um, this thing is just to make sure that the function it plots is within the interval of our data, so it doesn't just plot a random location in case you see the dots. Then in this next one, points plots the data points. Um, and again, we need to change the x to A because my variable names are A and B. And I've decided I'm going to make the dots red. You could choose any color to just check how things are looking. So I'll just run this line. And we get the preview of the graphs over here in the lower right hand corner. And so that's just our regression line. We're going to add the points on top of it. And there we go. Red dots for the three points I have. Obviously, you can also see that in re my regression. Uh, intercepts and slope here slopes they are completely identical for all three methods that's because it was just some dummy data i created which is apparently close to perfectly linear <laughs> um so but if you have more data points and they're a bit more scattered these constants here are going to vary a lot more than what we see in this example obviously these values for the slope and the intercept you can also just copy them into excel and work on your graphs inside Excel, which you might be a bit more familiar with than the graph functions from R. I hope that this video helped you in case you want to do reduced major axis or standard major axis regressions in the future on your natural data.